So let us consider the RTL file that we need to design for physical design process as a device that we actually want to transform this script file or the schematic into the layout versions into the actual silicon device that you can see inside a chip using electronic microscope and that RTL code can be of any module but let us take an example of counter so the counter.v is the verilog format file which can be written in terms of lines in this way that we can represent as a script so what we do in the verilog file we can create the input and output variables declare them and define them what is the purpose of it whether the out one is the output and data is the input so you have to define which is input and which is output and in a box if you consider this is a box or a module every module has input and output and the process is done inside the box or inside the module and that process is done in the terms of always at the rate begin of the operation so here we are using if loop for just counting or incrementing or decrementing the values so this is the process of the up down counter so and then we end the module by saying end module terminology if you have declared this then the system or the tool or any script compiler can understand this verilog code is ended by this line so there the design stopped so for this we require actual number of and gates or or gates or inverters or buffers in the schematic level that we can see in the design, in the synthesis process so let us go to the flow that we got explained with where the physical design flow starts from the design import and before physical design flow we need to synthesize the netlist and that netlist consists of the technology mapped to it and how we can map the technology files or technology cells to the actual schematic that we are going to see now so this is the rtl code and for this rtl code now we are integrating the technology under 14 nanometer integrate the, the technology cells under 14 nanometer to the verilog file so in the simple terms we are transforming this schematic into the layout and that we are going to see in this process of synthesis and after synthesizing the rtl to netlist rtl to gate level netlist that gate level netlist we will be using in the physical design place and road process so there are two steps involved here one is synthesis second one is place and road of a physical design flow so let us consider synthesis process in the synthesis the process is done by using the design compiler tool of the synopsis organization so design compiler is a tool where it translates maps and optimizes the schematic into a gate level netlist by embedding the technology to the schematic so we need to invoke the dc shell by doing tcsh and we can do enter the command dc underscore shell then this got invoked after entering dc underscore shell okay. 
So after entering the command dc underscore shell in the synthesis directory, so what we can do is we will be getting the dc shell invoked. So if you can see this window, then we can recognize that dc shell is opened. These are the service agreements or licenses of the tool that we have. So dc shell is a tool now for doing synthesis process. So here we need some commands to execute in this tool to get the design. So those commands are written in tickle format. Tickle is nothing but another language for making the tool to understand the steps that we need to design. Like we use C language or C++ language to make the understanding of a any machine or any device or any memory unit inside a machine and get the desired outputs from it. In the same way, we use tickle scripting in our tools for designing the physical design process of a block. So that tickle scripting can be seen in the terms of this. So what we do in the tickle scripting for a synthesis process? It is nothing but a few steps involved in such a manner to make the tool understand to go through these steps and get the desired output of the design that we require. So coming to the first step, we need to go to the common setup file which is nothing but the technologies that we are going to use are taken from this common setup file and some other technologies are obtained from library files which we have we can name it as link library and where we need to create the used technology so we are we are getting some technology cells or technologies from the one library and we need to create one another library for our own purpose so that we can say it as target library so after this there are few steps which we focus on reading the counter file see this is the rtl file which we give as input so that input can be understood made understood by the tool by this command read file then after we analyze the file we analyze the verilog file and we some we set some of the operating conditions and then we also include the sdc timing constraint file so now in this stage itself we are giving the timing to the actual verilog file we are matching it then compile by this compile we can actually process through the synthesis stage so the entire things will be compiled and combined format of a synthesis gate level netlist that we can generate then after it is about reports these are the commands for making the reports just to check what is the area what is the timing and what is the power that is consumed so in physical design process power performance and area are the three major ingredients or components that we are going to talk about and desire about for making a chip or a block inside the chip we call it as ppa power performance and area power is nothing but we need we require lower powers lower consumption of the powers and for the timings we require speed performance that is it requires much more speed to develop and in terms of area you might all know that we are reducing the technologies in the outer world from 5 nanometer to 3 nanometer and 3 nanometer to 1 nanometer that Apple will announce every time. So in terms of 
power performance and area we design the entire chip so that is our major constraint but it is very complex task where human intelligence is much more required in this domain so after reports we do save the outputs that are generated from this compiled design and that outputs are saved in the outputs directory with this command so shall we run this script file and check what is happening throughout this synthesis process let us go for running the file we are going through source command which can actually run the script in terms of tickle and we need to declare where this folder is present we have scripts folder where this tickle file is located now we can see after running through the entire tickle file after executing the file we can see the outputs are saved in the specific directory of outputs folder and the reports are also got saved the entire design optimization is complete so now we can check the files that we got as a output of synthesis we are looking at two major outputs which is one gate level at least second one is synthesized sdc timing constraints as per the schematic that we required and for looking the schematic we can actually open the gui graphic user interface and look into the schematic version of it so this is the up down counter and you can see how these gates are laid out and how these are connected at the schematic level but this is just a representation it is not the actual functioning design 
it is just a representation so this is actually the representation of the schematic of rtl file so you can see how these cells are connected and how are the input pins given and how are the outputs driven out so this is one output and these are outputs let us zoom into this and this schematic is combinedly viewed as single block or single module which is nothing but up down counter so what we see on paper we see one box and with inputs like clock port enable pin flag pin reset and data pin and data pin has eight number on it so the bus has eight bits driven through it so then one up down input for increment or decrement purposes and then one output and second one is another output pin which has bus size of 5 so if you see what is inside this up down counter module you can check the connections are made in this way so we can see the input pins in such a way connected through the cells logic cells and if you zoom in further more to one of the cells you can see this is an adder circuit and if you click on it it has another schematic shown now if you zoom into another area of this entire design you can see and gates and or gates so these are the cells inside a rtl code but this is just a representation but for this representation and for these connections we are looking for layouts and that layouts are designed through pnr flow pnr is nothing but place and route flow of physical design process i hope you got good understanding of what is an rtl code and what is the schematic of it let us go through the rtl code once again this is the rtl code you can simply see what are the outputs and inputs here just memorize one or two outputs this is output 1 and output 2 and this is the input up down clock reset data and it has eight bus so this we can see in the design stage in the design stage you can see the outputs you can see the inputs but inside this design you can actually see the connections of logic gates and if you zoom into one of the logic gates you can see and gates or gates xor gates and some adder circuits and one of the out, one of the registers and some of the registers and output and driven to the output pin and that output pin has the size of 5 connected bus to it so this is the actual rtl code and schematic to it which we have synthesized and now after this synthesized synthesized outputs now we are driving to the pnr flow for layout connections and layer inside in the terms of layer connections in the layout views